Hello, I hope you're having an amazing day. Maybe you're looking forward to eating cookies after a hard working day because you're anticipating how cookies will warm your heart. Well, if so, well, you're not alone. And let's talk about that and see how not to let cookies run your life. So let me introduce myself. My name is Nadej Sezana and I go by Nan. I'm a cravings coach. So you're in the right place if you really want to conquer your food cravings for good. There are several potential benefits of not eating too many cookies, including first, improved weight management. Because we know that unfortunately, cookies are often high in calories, sugar, fat, and that can contribute to weight gain and make it harder to maintain a healthy weight. So that's the first thing. The second benefit to not letting cookies run your life is a better blood sugar control. It means that many cookies are made with refined flour and sugar. And we know scientifically that it can cause spikes in blood sugar levels. So avoiding eating too many cookies can help keep blood sugar levels stable, which is important for overall health. That's the second point. The third benefit that I see is that it's a, there's a reduced risk of uh, chronic diseases. We know that eating too many, too many cookies and other sweets uh, can actually increase the risk of chronic diseases like diabetes, heart disease, cancer, among unfortunately others. So it can, um, avoiding too many cookies, avoiding eating too many cookies can actually help reduce this risk. There are also other benefits, namely improved dental health. We talked about the sugar, we know how damaging sugar can be to teeth. And it's also better energy levels. We mentioned the better blood sugar control. We know that when we consume um, food like cookies high in sugar, we have a sugar high and then a sugar crash, sugar crash, sorry, which can be, you know, difficult for us then to be um, creating a productive day. Let's talk about the issue. The issue might be that there are some cookies in your kitchen, in your home, maybe uh, in your office or so on. And maybe when you're thinking about those cookies, maybe just like one of my clients was thinking, maybe you're thinking cookies warm my heart. And when my client was thinking cookies warm my heart, we noticed that they were feeling joyful. And when they were feeling joyful, which in itself is not a problem, they noticed that they reached out for the cookies and they ate the cookies. They focused on the pleasure that the cookies were bringing them. And they didn't stop at one cookie, but indeed, because they kept repeating to themselves, cookies warm my heart, they didn't stop. And they didn't question the thought, cookies warm my heart. And what's interesting in that scenario is that there are two results. This sentence, cookies warm my heart, led to feeling joyful, which led to eating cookies, enjoying, and reaching for out for more, reaching for more cookies. And there are two results. The first one being that when we believe that, when we are in that scenario, we solidify the link between cookies and the way we feel. Cookies warm my heart, we feel better. We feel that relief, we feel that joy, we feel satisfied. That's the first thing nothing's gone wrong. But then maybe later on, maybe the next day, there's a second result, which is that we prevent ourselves from feeling truly better without cookies. That's important in the long run. So thinking and believing cookies warm my heart is not an issue in and of itself. I insist. It's really important. It's, there's nothing wrong with eating cookies. It's okay to eat cookies. There's nothing wrong with eating cookies or, or any other food that, yes, may be high in sugar, in carbs, in fat. Okay. They are intended to be eaten. They are meant to keep us alive. Nothing's wrong with that. It only becomes a problem when cookies are the only thing that warm my heart. That may be an issue. Or a whole jar of cookies every day warms my heart then the issue is that we only rely on cookies for us to feel good, which by the way, is an impossible equation. 
we cannot outsource our feelings to cookies. We cannot delegate the way we feel to cookies. It's impossible. Cookies, even fresh from the oven, even made with love from a mother, a grandmother, whoever, they can never ever warm our heart. Our stomach, our throat, our mouth, probably, yes. But we're talking about the sensation here, the physical sensation, not an emotion. A cookie can never make you feel any emotion. Even if they're sweet, even if they're homemade, even if they're organic or locally produced, they can never ever make you feel an emotion, be it uh, uh, guilt or joyful. They have no power over our emotional life. They can't make us feel happy, satisfied, comforted. Sorry to break the spell, if that's what I'm doing here. But cookies can never make you feel better. So let's explore. The only reason you're feeling joyful when you're having cookies is that you're thinking and believing that you'll feel better, that you're actually feeling better when you eat cookies. And it makes perfect sense. Cookies are often associated with a happy event or reward or comfort food when we're feeling down. And that from the very youngest age. That's what we hear on TV. That's what we hear during commercials. That's also the way most grown-ups were raised and actually raise us. Cookies are the reward as the end of a meal full of yucky veggies, or at the end of the day when we did lots of things that we really didn't want to do, like maybe homework or tests. So no wonder we make this associ association, sorry, cookies equal warm heart. And it's as if this association is ingrained in us as if it was part of our DNA. But we know that when we <laughs> and I, the sentence, when we look closely at this sentence, when we focus on the details, we know that it's not true. This sentence is a string of words that we've chosen to believe unconsciously, but it's still a sentence. It's still a string of words. And we can, you know, have a look at each, other, each one of them. So the first one is that we're thinking as if cookies had a life of their own and had power over us, because they're the subject of the sentence, cookies warm my heart. That's the first thing, it's as if the cookies have the power. <laughs> the second thing is that the, the, the verb warms sound, sounds objective, factual even, because we're using the present simple tense. It's as if it's a thing of the past, it's a thing of the present, it's a thing of the future, that's how it rolls, it's a definition, cookies warm hearts. Everybody knows that. So it sounds very objective, very factual, which is the tricky thing. And indeed, we know that cookies can give us energy. That's true, but they can't make us feel happy. The third and last thing is my heart. We believe that cookies have power over our heart, over the way we feel. But we are the masters of our own heart, even if we're not aware of it, even if we're not conscious about it. And we well, the heart can be the emotional center. So why not choose to warm our own hearts ourselves without giving this power to external things like cookies, without seeking external help? That way, the beauty of it is that whenever we feel down, whenever cookies are not available to us or anything else, it could be wine, it could be TV, it could be scrolling our phones, etc. Whenever those the external things are not available to us, we can actually truly take care of ourselves on our own. And that's beautiful. That's extremely powerful. And I'm also talking about really taking good care of ourselves now and in the long run, because as we've seen, it's not what cookies do for us. So we could really try to focus on feeling good for ourselves overall or overall well-being or health rather than focusing on immediate gratification, because that's what it is. When we think about the sugar and the flour in the cookie, we know that it's going to be instant, and that's perhaps what we're looking for in cookies, but we also know that it cannot be long-lasting. On the contrary, it's counterproductive. 
So as always, we've noticed, night's the time to question. And I'm going to invite you to think of three different questions when we think about cookies. So when we tell ourselves, cookies warm my heart, the first question, question we could ask ourselves is, what do I love about cookies in particular? So that we really pinpoint the one thing or the several things that we do like about cookies. There's nothing wrong, as I said, with loving cookies, but let's be specific and let's know exactly what cookie, what cookies we like so that we can really focus on those and really enjoy the moment even more. So that it's not just a sentence, but it's a reality that yes, you do enjoy eating cookies. That's the first question you could ask yourself. The second question could be, how can I truly enjoy and expand this warmth that I'm feeling when I eat cookies? right? If I'm really truly feeling joyful when I'm eating cookies, how can I make this joy even bigger? Let's expand it. It's possible. That's what I teach my clients on a regular basis. Let's increase the joy. Why not? And the third question you could ask yourself, of course, you've seen me, you've seen me, you know where I'm going. The third question could be, how can I create and expand this warmth that I'm feeling without cookies, right? So I'm going to invite you to think and answer this third question by choosing different thoughts. That's always the third phase. So here are a few thoughts that I thought of that could help you if you choose to think differently, if you want to think about the cookies without focusing on cookies and giving them all your power. If you want to change your thinking from cookies warm my heart to something that could be useful for you in the long run, here are three suggestions. The first one was, could be, I'm thinking cookies warm my heart and there's nothing wrong with that. That's probably going to lead you towards acceptance, allowance, acknowledging also, that's, that's what you're thinking, nothing's wrong with that, all right? The second thought that I thought about was, I'm giving my power over to cookies and that's what we humans tend to do that's probably going to create some form of understanding. Yes, that's what we humans do. Lots of humans do that. Nothing could wrong again. Or some form of compassion for yourself. Yes, I'm doing something that lots of people do. I'm a human too. Yes, I'm part of the human being. Um, I'm part of the human team. It makes perfect sense that I would think this way. And the third thought that I'm encouraging you to, to try on just for fun, could be, it's actually a question, but it's also kind of imagination. Imagine if I could make my heart warm all by myself whenever I want to. And I want you with this thought, I want you to explore what it would be like truly, really. How would you feel? How would you think? What would you do if you could make your heart warm all by yourself? whenever you want to, without, with, without relying on something external like cookies, a screen, or anything else. That's it. If you want more, of course there's more that's available to you. I'm inviting you to sign up for a free call, which I'm calling the Stress Eating Freedom Call, in which we explore the four mistakes that people tend to do when they don't want to give in to temptation and why those mistakes are mistakes, why they cannot ever lead us to freedom. And we also explain and explore and most importantly, apply the one proven method that works actually not to give in to temptation. That's the one that I'm using all day long, all, every day. That's the one that really helped me um, release this attachment that I had to food and release the binge eating behavior that I used to have, right? And also what's super fun is that we create a customized plan just for you so that you can apply this method in the long run, right? And if you stay, you're going to listen to Tracy, which is going to tell you about her own experience. She focused on coffee. We can focus on any food that you tend to go towards and it's super fun to notice that the people I've taken through this call are mainly talking about crisps or, ch or chips, pizza, cereals, bread, cookies, cakes, uh, coffee as I said, all sorts of um, 
those foods which we call very often comfort foods. So of course, there's something there, just like for cookies, that we think is ingrained in us, that there's nothing we can do in, about it, which is not true. Otherwise, I would still be binge eating today, right? So if that's for you, if you want to experience that, well, just sign up. I'm going to put the, the link in the show notes in uh, behind this video. If you know somebody who would love to experience some relief and not to be at the mercy of food, same thing, please share the link with them. Thank you so much. And I wish you a beautiful rest of the day. Take care. Bye. Man, thank you so much for this call. It was so enlightening. And I, before the call, I just felt like I had this craving for coffee and milk that was so strong. And I would never, I couldn't imagine not having it. And I didn't want to imagine not having that opportunity. And, and during the call, oh, you're so gentle. And you just brought things in this beautiful traveling road of going, walking me through it and just pointing things out in such a loving and kind way. And I mean, I feel like my brain has just opened up and now I see these options. I see you walked me through the processing of an, my emotion and my desire. And I can totally see that that's an option for me. And my mind's just opened up. Maybe I would consider what life would be like without it, but I don't have to. And you kept reassuring me of that, that it was my choice. It was just so good. I so appreciate you and taking this time and showing my brain some new ideas. So thank you.